All well, right, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm sharing this from Warsaw, Poland. Okay, just so you know so that that uh, it, I'm not hearing thunder and lightning because I'm not there. Right? Uh, this may be the uh, uh, first Zoom, as far as I know, where the chair is located overseas. So, welcome to you all. Welcome to everyone tonight. Uh, we will conduct the Zoom like we, we conduct this like we normally do. Uh, we give the opportunity, there will be opportunity for uh, the general public to make comments. We ask that you limit your comments to two minutes because we may have a few of them. Uh, that uh, uh, we ask everyone to be respective of people's opinions and their comments. We ask people to mute their, uh, their uh, microphones when they're not speaking so that we don't get extraneous things. We ask committee members to keep their cameras on. We also ask people when they're speaking to have their cameras, cameras on. Uh, we ask the uh, uh, community board members who are also on, who are not committee members, also to leave their their uh, cameras on. But other than that, it's up to you. As I said, we will we will uh, uh, go through the agenda, and I will have to ask since I don't physically have the agenda in front of me. I will have to ask John many times what's next on the agenda uh, in order for me to keep the agenda moving. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to change something and I'm obviously not able to, so I'm just going to leave it alone. In, in, any, in any case, uh, as I said, welcome everyone. Uh, the first uh, item on the agenda is to approve well, the roll call. Roll call, Sid. Oh, the roll. Excuse me. Uh, John, why don't you call the roll? Sid Meyer, Chair. Present. John Quint, Secretary President. Ernest Augustus. Speak up, Ernie. Open your mic. I know you're here. Me, I'm Committee just, members. Uh, here, here. Thank you. Committee members, turn on your mics. Andy Valboza. Uh, here. <clears throat> Esther Blount. Here. Uh, Juliet Cullen Chung. Uh, John Dews excused. Doreen Gallo excused. Cheryl Gelbs. Excused, uh, right? She's on the other yeah, no, I, Doreen, I said that. Cheryl, I think, is at a, the 84th meeting. Um, Kate Gilman, Brian Howell, uh, Patrick Kalaki. Here. Nicole Murray. Here. Ciro Scala. Here. We have a quorum. Next thing is approval of the minutes. And I have a motion to approve the minutes. Oh, no, sorry, adoption of, the, adoption of the agenda. Adoption of the agenda. Right, I... I, I you started you to do it? I'm, I'll move it. I, right. Any second on the agenda? I'll... Second. We have a second Stand for the second. agenda. Any opposition? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Now... The next... The next item on the agenda? Approval of the minutes. Any, is there any correction, modification, addendum for the minutes from the, la from the last meeting? I have a motion to approve the uh, uh, minutes from the last meeting, please. John Quint, I can't see, uh, 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 do we have a second? Esther, second. Thank okay. you. Well, is it, here we know oppos any opposition. Here we know opposition. The minutes are approved. District level crash statistics. All right. Share my screen. Uh, I think this one, yeah. Okay. Are you seeing a picture? 
Yes. We see the map. Correct. Yeah. So I'm going to start yes. with the map. And so this is uh, for new people. Um, these are the crash statistics with injuries for our community board. This is not reported crashes without injuries. So we're just seeing where the most dangerous areas are and the trends over a six month period. So this would be for last month, March. So we had in the district 48 total crashes with injuries, injuring nine cyclists, 13 pedestrians, and 32 motorists for a total of 54 injuries. Um, the areas are, as you can see, the usual suspects, um, Atlantic, Flatbush actually not so bad, and Myrtle. And if we were to look at the six months, um, we stayed pretty consistent with last month with February. I will note that the crash mapper did not include that um, gentleman who was hit and killed by the trash truck on this for some reason. I don't know if it didn't count it in this district because it was right above Atlantic, so it should have been. Um, so I did add him manually uh, into this because that was community board two as far as I know, unless anybody knows differently. Um, so we had that one, we would have had that one fatality for, for March, um, but overall we're pretty much the same as last month. January so far is the lowest month of any injury of um, six months of uh, injuries and crashes. Any questions? And then <clears throat> what's that? John, what's the next agenda item? Mr. Barbaccio oh. has a hand raised. Who's hand raised? Barbaccio, you're on mute. Yes, hi. Um, I've been a resident of Dumbo for about 23 years now, and I've definitely noticed like a lower quality of life for the residents here. Um, as far as um, I feel like, you know, it's mainly for the tourists now. And if you're a resident here, you have to like navigate traffic. Um, you know, there's no like traffic agents here directing traffic. The neighborhood is totally gridlocked all summer. Combined with the Washington Street closure um, makes it like not a lot of access out of here. If someone needed like an ambulance or something, that would definitely add to response time. And I feel like there needs to be like, a little more order here as far as, you know, the traffic goes. Um, with the street closures and the construction going on, I feel like it's not, it's not feasible to close these streets down to have people sit in the middle of the street. You know, I feel like Washington Street is a main- Well, like, I'm gonna ask you, to, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask, first of all, I'm gonna ask you to, to hold those conversations so we have the conversation about open street that's gonna come up. Okay. Right? Not at this point. Second of all, if you want to have more discussion of it, you should bring it up at the community forum at the end. And again, you should limit your, your even during the course of this, you really have to limit your discussion to two or three minutes because we really do need to have, a, we have a long agenda and a lot to discuss. And okay. not a, I'm not, I'm using that as a, as an education point, not against you personally, and he's accepted as that. Okay. Uh, uh, so we, we're happy when there will be time to comment when we talk about open streets later on. There'll be time to comment at the end, and we, we we're interested in this. And if, if it's something that we should ask the DOT to study, we can discuss that later on as well. Okay. Thank you. Any questions about any crash stats for the month or six months before I close screens? Okay. Hearing none, what's the next agenda item? Oh, open session on for public comment on the agenda items, which was open streets and uh, NYPD uh, PSA three. Well, you know, as, as it's my uh, way of running these meetings, I normally ask those to be held for the time that we're actually gonna have those agenda items to be discussed. So I know that, that uh, uh, and, and I find that that works much better in a smoother flow of things. So I'm gonna hold those two until we have the presentations. Is Emily's presentation on Open Streets next? 
Yes, yeah, so long and and uh, Taya and we have two presenters apparently. In addition to Emily, Kyle Gorman uh, from the Public Space Unit. So, okay, so. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Hi everyone, so, Emily's here. Um, we don't have necessarily a presentation for you. We do come with more information on open streets and on. Um, I will be here during the duration of the meeting. So if you have any questions on DOT, I will be here. Kyle is also um, on the line as well. Um, and he's, he would have more information or more updates for you on open streets today. But that session where we dig in deeper into Willoughby will be taking place in May. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Kyle, who will give us more information, um, and then questions. Okay, well, I welcome to you both. Mm -hmm. Please, uh, Emily, feel free to uh, conduct the presentation as you deem appropriate. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, nice to see everybody this evening. Um, I'm Kyle, for those of you who don't know me, Kyle Gorman. I manage our open streets program here citywide. Um, so all of the open streets across the city um, I have been managing over the last two years. Um, as Emily had mentioned, we will be back next month to discuss in greater detail the findings of the community feedback survey for the Willoughby Ave open street, um, as well as some other data points that um, I know folks are interested in hearing more about as it pertains to um, the open street overall. Um, so we're really excited to come back next month and um, talk to you uh, sort of through all of those details in greater detail. Um, the other item that we wanted to announce is that we are keeping the survey open until the end of the month. We've actually already received over 1,800 responses um, on the survey, um, which we've been promoting through digital media, social media, signage on the street, um, through sort of local email blasts, listservs, um, in residential buildings, other institutions, things like that. Um, but I'm really here today to ask you all to make sure that all of your friends, neighbors, family members, anyone who has any interest really uh, in particular with the Willoughby Ave Open Street to please take the survey. I'm gonna drop it in the chat in just a second um, so you guys can copy and paste the link um, and, um, and then promote it, like I said, within your own networks um, and we'll keep it open until April 30th. Um, we really wanna hear from as many folks as possible. Um, so I'll put that in, oh, someone actually just dropped it in. Great, thank you so much in the, in the chat. So please uh, go ahead and take that now if you haven't. Um, we also had recently sent you a number of notification letters related to some open streets in the neighborhood. I'm happy to discuss those now, unless that you'd rather uh, hold off on that, but I'm happy to answer any questions about uh, open streets in CB2 this year. Okay, I, I just want to say uh, the, the community board's position is that we would like to have an opportunity to comment on open streets and on any open street before they're implemented. Uh, we, we understand we have an advisory role and that, that it, that, but we think it's important to hear from the community and we will do that to the extent that people want to discuss them today as well. So again, our, the community board's position is, is very clear that, that we believe we have a role in the city charter to be the at least the sounding board for for uh, the community, not the, not the exclusive one, but that that we 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 should have an opportunity to be, to be heard. Now, uh, I I commented uh, on one that uh, uh, had been sent to me by Emily, and I'm not sure if we've received any requests to comment on anyone's further. But you can be sure that we will, uh, if if we don't have comments, we will let you know that, that we do, we're not we we have nothing to comment about. And I appreciate the fact that that uh, DOT seems to be at least uh, seem, uh, uh, I appreciate the fact that DOT is asking our uh, and what they do with that is obvious. To them at the end. Anybody else have something that would, they would like to ask ask or say? I can't see who raises hands on my view here. I see we have a question from Livizal. Linda Vassal. 
Oh, Thank sorry. you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Even though I've seen the application, uh, I was wondering what the actual criteria is, and my phone rings at that time, what the actual criteria is for open streets and why Willoughby Avenue is 24 hours, 24 seven, and who actually has to give the approval and I'll go on mute. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. So um, there's a few different types of open streets. Um, Willoughby is actually what's called our limited local access open street, which is typically found on similar residential corridors like Willoughby Avenue. Uh, the basic premise is that the street is designated as a bike and pedestrian priority corridor, but still allows for local vehicle access, um, emergency vehicle access, of course, at all times, accessory, deliveries, loading, um, Ubers, all the things like that, um, but really just promoting local trips. Um, Willoughby initially was chosen um, at the start of the pandemic, was actually one of the first sites that were uh, chosen to participate in um, the program. We solicited ideas from, um, you know, members of the public at large. We also sent um, a link to the community board, elected officials, and other organizations back in uh, would have been probably May or June 2020. Um, and through that process, we actually did receive a few applications or a few requests, I should say, uh, for us to deem uh, the open uh, Willoughby as as an open street. Um, did I answer all your questions? Sorry, I forget. And who has to give the approval? What's the approval process? Right. So we do a whole round of internal reviews at DOT, you know, talking to all of our internal planning units and other operational arms that uh, make up the great agency that we are. But we do a lot of other um, outreach to lots of other city agencies, including the NYPD, the fire department, um, DSNY, SAPO, MOM, all, all the agencies specifically would weigh on, on, on these types of things. Um, and then we, you know, look to you all to give your feedback and ideas through a comment period on um, on the applications. I will say that, you know, we can always do better with outreach. And I think I personally have learned a lot over the last two years, and especially as this program has been made permanent, that, um, Sid, I, I definitely hear you and agree with that approach, like involving the community board from sort of even the application process um, with a community partner really is, is something that's of value um, and, and really comprehensive and inclusive and 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 really just more valuable at the end of the day so um you know moving forward we definitely see uh you know, building out our outreach for the program at the cornerstone of, of open street and just to say one more thing quickly Sid, i'd like to say that i don't see where an assessment was done on the impact of the traffic and other things that exist in the neighborhood so i just want to make that statement and I think there should be a reassessment if there was one done to see how that impacts other streets and everything surrounding Willoughby Avenue by closing it down. Thank you. Again, I, I can't I can't see who's hand up or asking questions. So I'm going to ask John if he wouldn't mind or or, or uh, Atea to uh, uh, to uh, see if there are other people whose hands are up and who would like to comment on at this point. Ms. Blount's hand was up next. Hi, I have a question. Um, I think because there's three types of open streets and the community is not brought in and really you don't know which type you have, you don't know what rules to follow on your open street. Originally, Willoughby had two brackets on there, every corner. Now there's one bracket. I'm also told that when there's two brackets, they should be 15 feet apart and someone should be standing there at all times. So first of all, I would like to know, is that true? That is not true. No, that is not a requirement of the Open Streets program. Because in um, Williamsburg, they, um, they have that requirement. They do not have that requirement in Williamsburg either. The Berry Street Open Street operates in the same way that um, the Willoughby Ave Open Street does. And, for the limited local access type of open street, we do not ask for specific, uh, you know, tailored barrier by barrier management, nor does it have to be necessarily 15 feet apart. We actually reduced the number of barriers after we were able to implement, implement a street improvement project. 
Um, we did a survey back in um, the summer and fall of 2021, where we heard from over 1,300 individuals who wanted to see, you know, permanent changes made to the corridor to make it a bike and pedestrian priority street. Um, and that's exactly what we did. I will say that I, I see that the um, the Open Street website is actually pulled up on um, on the screen right now. That specific signage that's actually being shown um, is not the same signage that we have on Willoughby um, Ave right now. Um, and our website, I will I will admit, does need to be updated um, to reflect um, the new type of signage that we're using on Willoughby, which is actually a part of the pilot, um, a pilot type of sign that we use. Um, so that's why you don't see it reflected on our web, but that is something that I'm working on already doing. Well, you know, I think that's part of the problem. And like you said, it's, it's different types of open street. So you don't know which one has the 15 feet rule that's on your website, which one doesn't, which one has one barricade versus two. Since the community is not involved at all, you we don't have any idea if anything is amiss, no, no input in it at all. So I think that's a big problem. Yeah. Does anybody else have, uh, I guess, again, I can't see any other, any can, other Can hands? I say something? Hello? Lucy, could you wait your turn, please? Um, the next, the hands in order were Ernest Augustus, Nicole Murray, Shannon Phipps, Jessica Greenbaum, Lucy Cotine. Yeah, um, I looked at the timeline. In fact, I'm, I'm trying to complete a timeline um, about this open street uh, program that the community was not aware of. I'm sort of struck that this thing started at the beginning of the pandemic. Although the word, uh, uh, I know what I was doing on uh, March of 2020, uh, when they began to launch Open Street, uh, I was in bed with the COVID, uh, symptoms of the COVID. Uh, no one was uh, paying attention uh, to this program. It seemed to be gratuitous at this point, uh, and it was gratuitous. Um, people were, there was no vaccine. Uh, people were not in the streets. Uh, people were waiting to, um, to, for a vaccine to be developed. Uh, we didn't have uh, masks, or they call PPEs. I'm just uh, Ernie, Ernie, okay. Ernie, but, but here's a question. Blood, okay, please. but okay. The question is, is that uh, the need to circumvent the community board is, you know, which is in the city charter, is a great concern of mine. And it, you know, it's more than Ernie, I think. But, it, Ernie, but they've already conceded that they're not going to do that anymore. You know, nope. you know, Sid, 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 I just want to get it on the record. Whether they, whether they do anything or not about it. conceded that they're going to do this. So, you know, I mean, I don't. I, I understand, uh, Sid. I understand. Point, if you have an additional point, please make it. Well, I would like to see that Willoughby Street uh, close or push back completely, period. That's my position on that. Okay. Thank you. Next person, please. I think that That's was Ms. Murray. Yes. Yeah. Um, the comments about the approval process were informative. Thank you. Um, could you speak a little bit more about um, the approval process with the FDNY and NYPD? Because I feel like there's this sense, rightly or wrongly, um, maybe you could let us know that these are done sort of over the heads of these agencies and they don't get to say like, yeah, this will affect our um, response times or this has. So can you talk about the process for the initial approval and then any um, continued uh, uh, conversations you have with FDNY and NYPD? Uh, yeah, those are, are definitely considerations that we uh, factor in in virtually all the work that we do at the city's Department of Transportation, including open streets. All, you know, applications that we receive, the locations, the times, all the details are sent to both the fire department and the NYPD for comments. Um, they do not comment on many um, but for the ones that they do have comments on or, or issues, I should say, um, or, you know, impacts that might come to their operations, they definitely make them known to us. And there have been, you know, certain instances where DOT has had to remove open streets or adjust open streets, footprints, um, you know, different types of changes um, as needed. So we work in close coordination with them and, and we'll continue to do so. Like I said, 
the involvement of our emergency service partners is you know involved in, in all the work that we do with bike lanes, pedestrian plazas, open streets, curb extensions, um, car free Earth Day, even um, they they're always involved. Right, thank you. Yeah, I think it's important for that to be continuously communicated to the community boards because I feel like most of the comments that come in from people are about concerns about response time um, and that the idea that maybe that these agencies aren't involved. So that that information is helpful. Thank you. I have a comment. Uh, Shannon, Mr. Mr. Rosno, please hold. I, I, hold it. my, that's my wife's name. It's, it's okay. Mike Champagne. Shannon, you are next. Hi, uh, my name is Shannon. I live on Berry Street. And I'm with Berry Street Alliance. And I just wanted to address the fact that we've been barricaded for three years. And we've made several complaints through the DOT portal. And um, we've written letters that you've received, Kyle, we've met in person in which you told me to my face that you didn't want to discuss the barricades with me anymore. Um, not one of our issues have been mitigated. Our intersections are very are you speaking on a community board one issue I have, or are you speaking this is on the a city well, excuse me excuse issue? me I have excuse me I have two excuse minutes me, are you please, speaking on a community don't. board one issue or a community board two issue please open streets is everyone's issues happening all over the city this is a citywide issue, Thank and I'm you. speaking about the conditions that exist both in your in your district we, and mine. We, you're interrupting me, you Emily. Emily, yes. stop interrupting me. She only has two minutes. The same issues that the community has in one community board happens in another because the community is not involved. It's a city-wide issue. Okay. It is appropriate to raise issues about response from DOT. I don't have a problem with that, but we are trying to uh, keep this in, in the community board too. Uh, why don't we let the person finish their two minutes and then we'll go on with someone else. Thank you. I have a question about the, the impact studies that may or may not have Mr. been done. Mr. Rosno, can... could you please wait your turn? So I'm I don't sorry. get to talk, Thank right? You. Is that right? I don't get no, to let talk. Shannon complete her, her Yeah, let statement. Shannon please. finish. That's what I said, let her finish. I, now, Th these open streets are citywide and the conditions are being um, documented across the city as the same. I have met with the DOT. We have used their portal to make complaints. They, these, pro this program is not being managed. It's not the, the constituents, the, the people who pay property taxes and rents along these corridors are not being heard. The issues that are being identified are not being mitigated. We have emergency delays. 311 complaints are up. Our neighborhood, for example, is barricaded with two or three barricades at every intersection. Um, th this is a problem with the DOT going to each community board and saying it's all good. Um, you know, the application for Berry Street was put in by a group that doesn't even live here. And the process, the application was processed without us even having a review of it. And, and, our, and the community being able to say, hey, this works, this didn't work. Today, nobody was on the open street. So these are the things that need to be considered. And, you know, I have to say I was pregnant during the open streets and I couldn't move the barricades anymore. So I, I lost egress to my home. And I just wanted to say that the DOT is really not responding to the problems. They're just, they're, they're not. We've made hundreds and hundreds of complaints using your portal and not one of them have been, have been addressed. The barricades stay up 24 seven. Thank you. you. Know, thank you. Let, thank let, me, you. Let, me, let me let me say something about that. First of all, I do suggest you bring this back to the community board and your community board. The way that these things work, and you may, I mean, that, that, that there is a discussion, there is something, a, a borough board. And at the borough board, the community board, district manager and, and, and other representatives bring these things up to the, to the borough board for discussion. We are, we are aware that we've had issues with uh, a DOT not bringing to the community board. And, I, and I'm aware of that. And you'll see that in my, uh, my chair report. And you're also, um, you're also aware that they've made the commitment to bring these things to the board for discussion. Uh, I, I really do, while, while I'm concerned about the fact that they're not being responsive to you, 
that is in another community board and I urge you to discuss it with them. Unfortunately, I can't go to my community board because their partners have harassed me and my family and I'm now in a lawsuit with them. And Kyle, those are the people you're working with. They would be fired if they were in your office, but you're allowing them to be partners. North Brooklyn Open Streets Community Coalition, you're allowing them to, to occupy the street I live on. Shame on you, shame on the DOT. All right, thank you for your comments. Next person, please. Jessica Greenbaum, and a reminder, please try to keep your comments to two minutes so that everyone can be heard fairly. And we do appreciate the DOT for showing up every month to hear public comments. Thank you. I appreciate Shannon's comments. And the reason it's important to hear them in our community board is because it's important for our neighbors in, in community board too to understand that people can be against what is falsely being called open streets, which we know are closed streets. Streets are, we have sidewalks for people. And it's important for people who think, oh, this is just gonna be lovely to understand the problems it really causes. The notion that DOT is appearing and is showing up really means nothing about how much they're taking in any opposing views in this quote unquote workshop they held for Gates Avenue. They literally ripped up banners that had opposing points of view. It was a workshop for them to propagandize about something without listening to the idea that we have a system, we have a flow of streets. This is something that people who've lived here for 30 years understand. And that is something I wanna say that if you're gonna have a workshop, um, don't, don't fake, you know, don't fake it. Like, listen and really understand there are people here with real experience, lived experience. And I think Shannon, Shannon's voice was great just to that exact point. So thank you. Thank you. Next person, please. Renee Robinson. All right, thank you. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, two things. Uh, one is I want was wondering if you guys have uh, the report that was done, the people that were doing the survey on Willoughby Avenue said that they were reporting back about things that they found. Uh, while the few hours that they were there, they witnessed a fire department, a fire engine having to move the barricade. And the, one of the fire people spoke to them where you could, uh, and made a comment. Where you could, we all, they also witnessed some accessoried people and uh, people that had trouble getting uh, that going on. So I was wondering, one, do, do you have a, a report of that, a copy of that report with you? And no, no, uh, they, other instances they, they found? They, the other, they, they, they are completing this and they've asked for additional comments to the survey. So right, that I'm they, not talking about the survey people, itself. I'm talking about the people that were conducting the survey me, said that they were reporting me, back. They said they're going to report on this in May. So not, I don't not the survey, not the people it. that were conducting the survey. I understand that, but okay. if they're not prepared to report on the survey, oh, okay. they're not going to report oh, on the okay. survey. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, my so other they're, thing. They're going to be prepared to report on this in May. So okay. I, would defer, I would defer that point till May. Okay. Uh, what was your second point, please? Okay. Thank you, Sid. Uh, also, wake up. Uh, uh, the these the, the um in the interest in the uh, I'm sorry uh, in the interest of transparency the the the, the survey that you that, that the DOT did and the input that they got or lack of uh, comment uh, from the NYPD and the fire uh, and the group that was granted the uh, permit to, uh, to to have the open street. Do we have to get uh, freedom of information to find out about this just really kind of public stuff? I mean, it's not, we're not asking for anybody's home address. So I, I, I don't understand why we would have I, to I, that hoop. I made a FOIL request. I made a FOIL request for a copy of the application. Mr. Meyer, any... thank you. Mr. Meyer, in the interest of time, I wonder if we could just perhaps allow folks to cycle through their two minute comments with maybe less back and forth. Mr. 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 Meyer, uh, 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 pretty, Seamus, pretty long. I, a board member would like to speak. My hand is raised. Yes, I see your hand, Mr. Ciro. The next person on the list is Sandy. I just want to make a, a public service announcement. If you are not able to find the digital raise hand function, you have two options. You can either chat, and I will add you to the list in the chat, 
or you are welcome at the end. We will make a last call for any final comments. You will be heard. Don't worry if you can't find your digital hand function. I thought next. I was next. Uh, you, you know what, Lucy, go right ahead. Sandy, my, my apologies. Uh, yeah, I want to ditto what Shannon said and some of the other people. Um, you know, the people who live on these blocks are not being included or informed. So there's like a select people who know about these streets and they, you know, most of them are linked into transportation alternatives and they have a very big, pub, you know, network of, of discussion. But as you've heard here, as people heard, heard at that uh, PS20, whatever thing that was at Crystal Hudson call, most of the people who actually live in the neighborhood or on the block knew nothing about it. So please keep that in mind. Um, the survey, as I said, and as I told people on the street is totally biased. It doesn't say, it's not open-ended. It doesn't say, what do you think about this idea? It says, tell us how to make it better. What, what do you like, what do you don't like? It's not an open-ended kind of survey. It's totally biased and that needs to change. That's not a real survey, it's a done deal. Um, I wanted Emily to speak about, um, oh wait, one more thing on open streets. It seems to me the only purpose is open, open street is to create more congestion on every other street, more noise pollution, more air pollution, because that's the only thing it's accomplishing. One or two people don't need to walk down in the middle of the street. The sidewalks have worked forever and ever. We don't need these open streets. The park is right there, Willoughby. It only creates congestion and there's no EIS, there's no environmental studies. Why does one block get to live in what I call a fairy tale situation where they don't hear the noise of ambulances running down the street or the cars honking or to know the congestion? We all have to share the burden of the city. But I did want Emily to talk about this new policy of DOT after we're done with this, where um, uh, they're no longer giving violations on street uh, sidewalk damage from trees. And all of us people in the area who have received violations, we were not informed. DOT did Lucy, not contact Lucy, us. Lucy, can you talk Lucy, about that later? I'm done. Well, Sandy. you got to talk about it later. Next person, please. Sandy? Sandy, could you come off mute, please? Yeah. Um... There you go. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Taya. So uh, let me just do one thing. Okay, with all due respect, I do have questions. What can the DOT and the mayor be thinking when they embolden and deputize private individuals as a militia to take control of public thoroughfares and blocks where the people who actually live there object to them and to the, object, uh, to the obstructed barriers? And what can the DOT and the mayor be thinking when the misnamed Orwellian, quote, open streets, which are actually closed streets, prevent paratransit, accessoride, door-to-door -door pickups because the drivers will not remove barriers and barricades. The city continues to flout the federal ADA access and egress laws. So what else is new? Check out the MTA missing elevators. What can the DOT and the mayor be thinking when hyping, quote, needed pedestrian open space on Willoughby or South Portland for that matter, on streets which actually abut the most glorious and massive open space one would wish for, namely Fort Greene Park. Hey, you know, it's right there. Okay, your time's up, next person, please. Uh, thank you, Sandy Ellis is next. Yes, uh, thank you. And thank you, Sandy, for uh, bringing up the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act and how um, and the rights of people with disabilities to participate in our society um, at the same level as people with no disabilities. And because of that, I am wondering, I heard from Kyle's presentation earlier that there were studies and people were consulted and I am wondering what study was done specifically from the perspective of the, Amer of the rights or under the Americans with Disabilities Act for all of us, young and old and able-bodied who can get on bikes and not able-bodied who are waiting for, uh, for accessory, 
to participate in our community here. Thank you. Next person, please. Thank you, Ellis. I'm sorry, your name is just showing up as Zoom. Hi, um, I'm just not posting my name anymore. Um, I don't want it to be posted. Um, uh, hi, I, I, I would like to know who the entities are or who the entity is for this particular street that is in control of it. Um, I, I don't know if they are like a, called Fort Greene Open Streets, but um, I'm actually, I'm very nervous and I've had my, I've had interactions that have been made me to feel that I would never want to, um, I, I, they, I've had negative interactions with them and I would, I feel nervous that they are the people that are this un, unaccountable group that is con, in control of the street and that they will be continuing programming. Um, and the programming on this small street, I just, there's, there's, a, there's funding for programming. And, and when we've been restricted to one block party per year, I, you know, I don't understand how like we're just all of a sudden going to be having programming on our street. Um, there's just so much impact happening to the residents with the added traffic and everything else. But so this group, I, I wouldn't even email them. I've had, I, I've already had negative interactions. So, but they've never come forward. So I, I, I've been to this page and the thing that really scares me is it says, if you want, if you want perhaps plan an event on the street, that scares me, uh, especially with what's happened, you know, since the opening, since whatever, since the crystal, uh, leading up to the Crystal Hudson meeting. Uh, yeah. Who are they? And yeah, I'm scared. Okay. Hey, can I, uh, just, can I, can I, sorry, is there anyone yes, that please I respond ahead, to that? Yeah, no. thank you so much. So I want to be abundantly clear. The streets are still under the control of the city's Department of Transportation. We hold every right to sort of, you know, remove any open street or make any sort of changes as we need. So there's not some sort of private group of citizens that have somehow sequestered their way into controlling any particular street in New York City. Um, we still, you know, they're still city streets. Um, this particular open street for a period of time was managed by the Fort Greene uh, Open Streets Coalition, which is made up of a, an amalgamation of different types of individuals that live within the community. They are not, Who are they? They're not some group. They're not from Fort Greene. I'm um, part of it, Ernest. There's one. Um, there's there's many others as well. It's a volunteer-based organization. And, you know, Probably uh, much got like... one name. So the one thing that I wanted to add um, is that, you know, we are really appreciative of the efforts that the coalition uh, were able to do in order to manage the open street when city resources were not able to do so. The open street now is actually managed by a DOT contractor, the Horticultural Society of New York, through um, some of the cleanup core support that we received um, in this current fiscal year that we are in, which was set up by the previous uh, mayoral administration. Um, so that the sort of barriers and, and all the sort of operational features uh, as it pertains to the open street is now actually managed by, like I said, a DOT contractor who we have a lot of, you know, great history of working with through our One Plaza Equity program and now our open streets program as well. So I've uh, spoken DOT to many of them, by the way. I've... Sorry, you're muted. I've Mr. spoken with Martin. a lot of the people. But Mr. Martin, I'm sorry, programming... please feel free to finish your comment. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I just want to tell you I had met them and they were not a problem. Right. So and, and also let me also make abundantly clear as well. You know, DOT is, is, obviously, is obviously very supportive of regular positive use of open streets, which includes programming activities, things like that. In many of the conversations that we've had, the, the coalition really just wants to keep this as a bike and pedestrian priority street for a safer way for people to get to the park, 
for the hundreds of kids that go to PS20, for the hundreds of students that go to the other educational institutions and, and all the people that use Willoughby Avenue. So, you know, there's definitely not going to be any sort of, you know, block party event style atmosphere that's going to evolve on, on this open street. Yeah, who's the next person? What if someone? Ask, what if someone holds? Excuse me, mute. You cannot interrupt. Thank you. Next on the list, I apologize. I just lost my list. Next up is uh, the last name is Rosno. Thank you for patient. Uh, Erica, yes, thank you. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Um, what specific impact study was done before this was implemented? Um, we, we've heard at the PS20 meeting that the, uh, the well, survey it, was imperfect. Excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm not finished. Um, what, sir, what impact survey was done? We know from the recent uh, court case that there was no impact survey done when the kiosks for restaurants were put up. I strongly doubt that there was a real impact study done on this one. Secondly, people on the blocks that are directly affected, and I am one of them, were not consulted. I went out when the extra uh, curb uh, extensions were being put in and asked the workers, what's happening here? No one would tell me or could tell me anything. Thirdly, if you live on these streets and you have a car and a driveway on these streets, you are constantly and continually harassed by passers-by who think that you're doing something illegal. Now, you can roll your eyes, you can disagree with what I might have to say, but we're living it. I don't think anyone's rolling their eyes. In fact, you'll see here, uh, these specific comments are in the letter we sent uh, Commissioner Bray later uh, in my, my report. So, so we're aware of these and aware of uh, them. No one's, if anyone's rolling your eyes, I'd be, it's, uh, you, it wasn't me. I may have been looking around the room here, but it wasn't because I'm well, going to That's okay, but I'm, that's fine. But I, 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 I wasn't directing any particular individual. What I'm saying is we have a lot of advocates who are, pushing this, who have not consulted the people who live on these blocks. Many of us are older. Some of us are disabled. Moving barriers is a severe, uh, a severe hardship for us, especially when the weather is bad. And that, that is not being addressed. That is okay. completely okay. pushed thank, out of the rug. Thank you for your comments. Next person, please. Um, and and, we, and we, we'll take, believe me, we are taking the continent nuts. We will be taking all these comments into consideration. Andre? I appreciate the time and I have a clock in front of me so no one has to tell me when my time is up. <laughs> As a longstanding resident in this community, I'm gonna highlight what has been put in the chat multiple times. The community has spoken. If we were silent, it'd be concession. It's obvious there's a problem. So whatever needs to be done, and I have some friends now that I know show up. I appreciate you, Lucy. I appreciate you, Sandy. I appreciate you, Ashanti. You know, I didn't really know until I came back home. This is not, this is not what the people want. So it won't happen. Born and raised, 1963, Fort Greene, Brooklyn, okay? Have a good evening. Thank you. Next person, please. Thank you, Andre. Um, my list keeps moving up as you all chat. That's great. Uh, next up is Mackenzie. Did Mackenzie leave the call? Okay, next up is Ciro. Thank you, Taya. Um, I don't know if I could say anything right now. A lot has been said, but however, I want to ask Kyle a question. Um, it seems the committee board, uh, we had a, in some of the meetings we've had previous to this one, we keep on hearing from the community uh, of these different blocks, uh, questions about the group who sort of uh, asked for the, the, the open streets. Who are those people and who do they represent? I wanted to ask you, how, what is your criteria when you get an application or how is that done uh, and formulated, and what investigation do you do to see how authentic that group is in their representation of the block? Uh, we seem to be getting conflicting um, discussions from one group saying that we're not part of the group, and there is another coalition that is the group. 
uh, would you clarify some of your, how you work it through to try to be equitable? Kyle, do you wanna answer that question? Yeah, I'll answer very quickly. So based on the legislation that was passed for um, to make the permanent program, uh, to make a permanent open streets program, we are sort of required to work with both formal like 501c nonprofits and groups of restaurants, as well as informal groups of people, as is the case of the coalition here um, in, in Fort Greene and, and with many of our other open streets across the city. Um, we you know, are in direct contact with these folks all the time. They work with us um, and can reach out to us at any time, much like anybody here on the call can really reach out to the DOT's uh, Brooklyn office and, and sort of voice their concerns, their thoughts, their opinions, their ideas. Um, so we definitely work closely with them um, and, and then take it from there. Um, you know, we can't help the fact that it was created, the legislation was written by the city council that allows for these informal groups to come together and, and apply to manage an open street. Um, that's a legislative issue. Um, so this grassroots level of organizing is something that has really evolved as part of open streets. And I do foresee it to probably be a, a continued part of it. Thank you, Kyle. Next person, please. Thank you. Um, apologies, my list keeps moving up. Maria? Hi, thank you very much. Um, I've agree, I agree with everything that Sandy, Lucy, and so many other people have said, uh, Rosno has said, um, about <laughs> residents not being um, actually considered and our needs not being considered. What I would like to add is that um, I'm glad somebody brought up PS20 because I've been speaking with teachers at PS20 and they overall, all the people I spoke with, all the teachers and, and other people who work there are have been blindsided by this and have been actually harassed by people, pedestrians, and some of them are, are parents as they try to uh, park their cars, as they just try to go to work in the morning. Uh, some of the teachers at PS20, I was told, come in from Long Island, some come in from New Jersey to work, and um, more spaces have been taken away because of the blue painted build outs. Um, and so now they've got fewer parking spaces. They have to get to work even earlier just to find parking spaces. So this does not benefit the teachers I spoke with at PS20. Um, the other comment I'd like to make is that um, someone who's very high up in, in one of these organizations tweeted, and I can tell you his name if you're interested, I believe I remember his name correctly, that for deliveries and for pickups like Accessoride, people, they should just back, go down to the next intersection and back down the street. And a comment like that just shows me very clearly how single-minded and out of touch some of these advocates are. And while I was out talking the day that the DOT was out uh, a couple of weekends ago, uh, I was talking to one of the DOT people and we saw a FedEx truck back down Willoughby Avenue to make a delivery. And that is just dangerous and wrong on so many levels. And it's just so out of touch that somebody who is advocating for the open streets would even suggest that drivers do that is just unconscionable, I think. Okay, thank you. Next person, please. Thank you, Maria. Next up is Scott. Yeah, so uh, I'm just sort of amazed how poorly this has been implemented and with such a lack of empathy that it could cause this much anger. It's actually... I mean, it would be hard to work to roll out something with this much anger, unless that was your intention. But really, my main comment is, why such a beautiful street as Willoughby, did it have to be made so ugly if you wanted an open street? Why, why does it have to be so ugly? Okay, thank you. Next person, please. Back to Mr. Ernest. Um, you know, I live in Brooklyn and I'm opposed to the open street because it's, it really isn't needed. Um, the rationale doesn't hold, not today. We all understood during the pandemic uh, and the emergency and the executive order that was uh, issued by the governor and by the mayor 
uh, to suspend a, a certain operation from the city. Uh, but at this point, uh, nobody could explain in the middle of a, of a pandemic the urgency to make a program that was temporary and make it permanent or to uh, try to make it permanent in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, I know Kyle can't speak to it. We have had conversations. And I know that the uh, city council uh, passed some legislation that may be a little corrupted. But the, uh, it, you know, if you have, you know, yes, yes. You. Don't do that unless you have specific about corruption. I really don't want people. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, dispar Sid, I'm not disparaging anybody. I'm not well, disparaging anybody. Could I, could I, could I, could I, 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 please move on. You commented before, you had some time. I please just want to say something. Uh, let me finish my statement, Sid, please. What I'm about to say is that in any residential neighborhood, especially a brownstone residential neighborhood, there is no density. That's its characteristic. Uh, you have sidewalks. Uh, you can social distance. When you walk down a block, uh, there are literally uh, no people on the block. There's no parade going up and down. I know Willoughby, people go out to the store, they walk down the block, but it is not that there's no density that would require any sort of uh, open street activity. Okay, thank you. Next person, please. Um, Mackenzie, I'm sorry, we missed you earlier. Did you want to speak or comment now? I believe you're on mute if I, I can't see you. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Chair, would you like to accept a second round of comments or are we limiting no. folks to one? Okay. No, we've had enough comments. We've had enough comments on this issue. I recognize what people are saying. Okay. I mean, I'm, unless there's something uh, so, unless there's something new or different or that, that I think we've heard enough. Okay. So Mr. Barbaccia, Andre, Rosno, and Janet have already spoken. Has, is there anyone else that wanted to speak that has not had a chance to speak yet? Yes, I would like Mr. to speak. Mr. Ashanti. So I'm just gonna be real quick. I've been here for over 30 years. Yeah. Sid, you said you want something new. So I would say this to Mr. Gordon, Mr. Gordon's Kyle that works with DOT, have a new town hall meeting. Get the people in the neighborhood two weeks of advance notice, put up posters, inform the neighborhood and you'll see a true reaction of the people that oppose this community i mean oppose the project that's happening in this community trust that so if the people the chance to know what's going on get them time to be there and they will all speak and you will hear people truly talk and let you know we do not want this simple as that have another town hall meeting and let the people know in advance and put the information out there and you'll get that impact and you'll see the truth that's all i'm gonna say thank you Okay, thank you for your comment. Next person, please. Thank you. Ashanti. Let's do it. Let's make uh, it happen. Did, I'm sorry. Oh. Thank you, Shanti. Uh, did Roslyn want to make a comment, I believe? Yeah. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that. Oh, not um, Ros, no, I'm sorry, Roslyn. No. Please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, Mr. Lewis. Rob, no, Janet, I believe the chair has stated that he does not want to do a second round of comments. So because you've already all had a chance to speak, we're going to pass. Has, does anyone else wish to speak that has not had a chance to be heard yet? Now, and, and I want to add one other thing. Wave your hand at us. <laughs> I want one thing. If, if, if you don't believe that you've had enough time to comment, and if you want to put a written submission into the board, we're happy to get them. But we, we have a, a, you know, I don't want this to run all night. We've had one comments from people. If you've had your comment already, please let someone else comment and we have the rest of the agenda item, rest of the agenda to cover. Thank you. Rosalind has her Not hand up. Anything. Sorry, I don't see Rosalind. I see her and I see her hand waving. Oh, Badly, could you come off? You, oh yes, I see. Rosalind, could you come off mute, please? I apologize, didn't see her. Can you click the unmute button? All right. In the meantime, I don't know how I was muted. I'm sorry. There, there she is. Okay, we yeah. can hear you. I'm sorry. 
Uh, I just wanted to make a few comments on um, the very diff definition of streets includes sidewalks. These are the, the euphemism of open streets is, is inaccurate. They, these are closed streets now. When I've spoken to the police and the firemen, the fire companies which are right around the corner, they have a very different point of view than was mentioned officially. Uh, they, they feel they cannot express their opinions openly. Um, and um, at, at least that was to me. And when we have a survey like this, you know, uh, we're, as Ernest said, we're low density residents. And we don't have a network like, and nobody has mentioned transportation alternative. I, maybe we're not supposed to, but they have thousands of people in their network and a well-funded network. And we just don't have those tools. Uh, we don't have propaganda tools. We don't have videos to show people. We don't have uh, people writing ad copy words for us to make our points more, more um, you know, more acceptable or, or more or stronger. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the um, uh, in, in, earlier it was mentioned that there are more accidents are on Myrtle, and that's where some of this Willoughby traffic is going, and the rest is going on to Lafayette. When I've spoken with the DOT representative, I got an eye roll. I just want to let you know that. Um, but when I'm accosted on the streets, when I have to move the barriers. People are telling me that cars have free parking and free use of the streets. So if you look it up, and I'm sure Transportation Alternative knows this, four billion, close to $4 billion comes from motorists to the state of New York, which is used for the maintenance of roads and bridges, pu uh, public transportation and DOT. And the city earns close to 6 million, maybe a little less, the pandemic, that is, I'm sorry, 600 million uh, from motorists uh, for or to towing, parking uh, violations, whatever. And uh, so these streets yeah, aren't free. We pay the same taxes of everyone up. else. And Rosalyn, we, please, please finish up. Yes, I am. Uh, thank you. And um, you now you've <laughs> interrupted my fragmented uh, train of thought. Uh, but anyway, when we have surveys, we, we really, it it's just doesn't work uh, for us in an equal way. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, the, I'm going to close, unless, unless there's someone new to speak, I'm going to close this uh, portion of the agenda and move on to the next agenda item. I'm not sure if Miss Janet wanted to say something, and I don't believe she's commented yet. Janet, you had your hand raised earlier. She's, she's muted. Okay. Janet, I'm going to hear you. Oh, she does have her hand raised. Come off mute, please, Janet. In the meantime, is there anybody else? Last call. Last call, because this is the last person to speak. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Janet. Thank you. I'm rather new to this. Can you hear me? Good evening. Janet, yes. you're on mute again. Yes. Oh. J Ms. Skinner, we could hear you, but you just muted yourself again. Can you can you come off of mute? Yeah, we're going to have to ask her to put it in writing and submit it to the board. Wait, we have to move. Let, let, to let's move give her. Let's give, her give her a chance. chance. Oh, she was so close. Ms. Skinner, whatever you did before, we could hear you. Now we can't. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna move on. Uh, John, what's the next agenda item? Uh, Mr. Mr. Richard Weiss just got it up real fast. <laughs> Captain, Captain Omar Birchwood of the NYPD PSA3. Captain, uh, uh, let, let, me, let me first thank you for waiting around and, and we, will, we will be happy to hear what you have to say. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Sid Meyer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for Community Board too for just uh, giving me a couple, a minute or two to say hello. I just want to come on to uh, introduce myself, uh, the new commander for uh, PSA3. Um, 
that in your community board covers uh, Farragut houses and Whitman Ingersoll houses. So um, I sort of expect as Rosita as she's moved on to another um, endeavors. But I just want to, like I said, come on, say hello, you know, introduce myself so you see my face and know who's here. Um, you know, if you have any questions or anything, I'll leave my email in the chat. I have an open door policy to community if you have any issues going around in and around our housing developments that you think we know, need to be aware of. Please don't hesitate to let us know. Um, you know, we've been doing pretty well overall. I'm going to say in housing, especially over there, last month in March, you know, no instance of violence, I'm going to say. Uh, just, uh, you know, the weather's getting warmer. So we did have seen a slight uptick over there in Whitman. Uh, we had two shootings over there, not fatal shootings. But uh, other than that, you know, just wanted to come on and say hello. See a very passionate community board here, which is good. Um, and I uh, just wish you all the best of luck. And hopefully we can meet each other in the future. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Captain. Have a good evening. All right. Anybody have any questions for, for Captain? Uh, John, what's the next agenda item? Unless someone has questions. Your, re for your report. Anybody have questions? Excuse me? Chair, Chair's report is next, if there are not any questions. All right. um, my, my, my name is Deborah. Report? I have I have a question for the captain. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, um, good evening, sir. Um, my name is Deborah. I live in Walt, Whit Walt Whitman Houses, and and it's starting to get a little warm, and we're starting to have some problems. Um, I have one particular issue with a homeless man who has been laying in our hallway floors for over six months. We've called uh, me and other neighbors. We have called um, PSA three. We have called nine one one. They move him out. He he's a fighter, so he he gives them a little bit of a run for their money. But we can't see. As soon as they escort him out, he's back in in the building again, sleeping and and uh, you know just doing things that he shouldn't. So that's one issue. Another issue we're having is that there's someone going around uh, toward like 135 Washington Avenue in the projects and they're tagging the apartment building horribly and they're tagging the cars. I think we've had about 70 cars, uh, 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 windows busted um, out over the past few weeks. The, uh, 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 the writing on the, this one particular building um, but uh, my car was also vandalized, which I've just gotten fixed. It got sprayed up with orange paint along with a lot of hardworking people in this community. And they're not seemingly doing anything to catch this fella. So those are the two big issues that, that um, you know, that I'm complaining about this night, uh, this evening, sir. And I'd like to know what we can do to, to, to get this rectified, because this is very sad. All right, thank you, Ms. Deborah. So let's start with the homelessness. Homelessness. Um, so let's let's start to say homelessness is not a uh, crime. So, but we do address. That. Yeah. So we do address homelessness. We've done multiple outreaches over there where we offer them services, and a lot of times what happens is they refuse a the service out there. We've had uh, operation, I believe, on um, Monday or Tuesday, and we brought a DHS. This is something we just with uh, Councilman Crystal Hudson. We're trying to find di different um, resources to offer them to get them housing. Another thing, if if it's a thing where your your apartment door is locked, or you know, I'm excuse me, your, your building do door is locked or something, just let us know and we could call NYCHA to get that door fixed. So if we do escort them out, there's no way to let them in. I know sometimes we could do up and overs, but. This is how we've been uh, trying to address homeless issues. We're trying to work with even the shelter down the block. We're trying to figure out time so they're not, you know, not allowing them to come in late at night. But if, if it is an issue and you know you feel unsafe, don't hesitate to call now. One, we do have offices out there in close proximity in that specific development, basically all night. So, and, um, well, you know what the difficulty is with that service is sometimes they come and sometimes they don't. But the the reality is, I'm a 60, 64 year old woman, disabled. And I can't go out and put my garbage out when I need to put my garbage out. You know, he he eats, throws everything on the floor. He smells really bad. And, you know, I, I, I pay decent rent. People are under the understanding that if this is just the ghetto where you're here and you're not paying much money. I pay, I pay a decent amount of money to live here and I shouldn't have to go. 
through this along with other people here. And to hear people say, well, homelessness is not a crime. No, it's not a crime, but we should not have to deal with this every single dog on there every single night, excuse my French. Um, this is, it's, it's, it's outrageous. It's been over six months and it, it's almost every single night. And at times they come and they, they put him out. But like I said, as soon as they go away, he comes back in. And I know it's a hard issue um, to deal with, especially when they have other things to do and he's gonna come back in. But I, I, it, this is not fair to us. This is not fair. And he targets my floor. He targets the floor that I live on. And, and like I said, I can't even go out when I want and put garbage out in, in, into the chute. And okay. it's not fair. And then this thing with this, this, this um, man who's tagging up all these cars, um, have you heard about that? In yeah, I, I actually saw the uh, vandalism at yes. the watch, watch the yes. walk on the wall myself when That's I put it right. out here. That's and right. And I know it was cleaned off and he comes back. And he comes back. But over the past three weeks to a month, he was just doing the buildings. Now this person is doing the cars. That was, that was the food. Yeah. Cap Captain Birchwood, this is uh, Taya from the district office. Welcome and congratulations on your new post. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to confirm uh, something for Ms. Deborah. The office has actually received several calls about this particular door and this particular floor. You actually correctly identified the problem. It is that the um, the lock on the door to that particular stairwell is broken. So if your office has any influence on um, seeing to getting that fixed, I, I think that that might solve the problem. Okay, yeah, we could, we, we, we have to put a little pressure on the property managers. That's, that's really who's in charge of you know, fixing the locks. And um, as far as the vandalism, yeah, like we, we, we aware of it. I didn't aware, I wasn't aware of the cause, but that building being vandalized, I saw it myself. Um, Apparently this guy at, who we think has an issue had something, somebody else in the apartment who doesn't live in that building more, but it continues to keep coming back even after they clean it. So what we can do, we can try the operation to catch them, but it's, it's kind of hard, there's no video, but you know, something we'll see on top of actually, you know, I have two very good NCOs over there also, Francis and Geraldo, very good that um will take it. If you wanna just email me your building so I can increase some people to check that building out on a, on a more frequent basis. And you don't have to put it in the in the public. I'll I'll definitely send someone over there to check it out on um every tour. Just have someone to check your building to make sure that person's not in there. Miss Deborah, should... if if you need assistance connecting with Captain Birchwood, please contact the office. We'd be happy to help you. Okay. And and I also recommend. I, is this is this I don't is this this is not in the eight is this in the eight four precinct or in the other precinct? The eight eight precinct. The eight eight precinct. You know that that it is helpful. Uh, at times, because I believe that the districts do show up at those meetings to go to the precinct council meeting. I find that, uh, you know, that the, especially with the help of uh, the precinct commander, that they sometimes can uh, target the area a little bit better if they're made aware of the problem. And yeah, we have a formal ways of making the way, way, making it aware of the problem does, I find, increase uh, police surveillance, surveillance of the area and, and, and I applaud the police for doing so. Yeah, we have our co a community council uh, meeting at once, the first Wednesday every month and you, a lot of times the property managers are on those calls. So if, if you want to you know, let them know exactly what's going on. Thank you. Thank All you, right, Kathy. Thank you. And welcome to our meeting. Mr. So, Meyer, I, there, I, I do see two hands raised. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to do that. Okay, we've got Nico Francis Whitman and Richard Weiss. Ladies first, I think. Uh, uh, Francis, did you want to come off mute? Hi, how are you? I just want to introduce myself. Good afternoon. Um, I work at PSA3. I just want to introduce myself as I'm one of the neighbor coordinating officers. So um, I'm in Women Ingersoll every day. So any complaints about homelessness or anything in the area, I'll be, feel free to help you guys out with everything. I'm going to put my email in the drop down box. So. I'm out here right now with, you know, we're addressing the homeless condition, you know, we're working on it. I also heard you about the graffiti. We're, we're working on a case with the detective, like my captain said, regarding that we have, we have a bunch of POIs and interest. So we are working. We are so sorry that your cars got vandalized. We are working for graffiti NYC to get the graffiti removed because, you know, we don't want to see that either. So I'm going to drop my, from my email of me and my partner. I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Okay. 
Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Francis and Richard Weiss. Good evening, everyone. And uh, first of all, Captain, thank you for your service. Uh, we're all grateful for that. Um, I'm sitting here with my 10 year old son and he's been listening to this whole meeting. And I think, you know, I just want to present the big picture, you know, especially after this difficult week we've all had as New Yorkers. And that's a little thing that keeps popping up a lot I hear is the word is fear. Because I mean, that uh, woman who was just talking uh, in the Walt Whitman houses is talking about her fears. And then there's the open street vigilante fears. And I, and I guess, I don't think the, DO, uh, the Department of Transportation knew what, what was gonna happen with the result of open streets or anything like that. But I think we really need to get things under control and, and all elected city officials need to come up with ways of, of not only you know, coming up with new ways of improving our city, but also to help us you know, through this difficult time. There's a lot of people with a lot of anxiety and fears these days. And I, I'm, I'm really concerned about that. And I just want us to always remember the big picture. There's a lot of people suffering right now. And uh, I think some of the policies, while maybe they're well-intentioned, are having some consequences that may be not so good very quickly. I'm a six foot five, 230 pound man. And when I remove the barriers, I'm not afraid, but I certainly feel for a lot of the folks here who have called tonight and who have that fear. Uh, so my heart goes out to you. And I, again, I appreciate everybody for their efforts because I think everybody is well-intentioned here. But I, I think we all have to remember that we're living in a society where there's a lot of fear right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Any other one comment on this one? before I give my, my report. Uh, Tay, can you put up the uh, letter that we uh, sent to the uh, uh, borough commissioner on open streets? Taya? This is a letter that was sent earlier this week from, uh, and I can't scroll it from here, so you'll have to do that for me. It, it discusses open streets, which, and, and uh, uh, we'll put a, we'll put the uh, copy of the letter in the, in the chat. Can you scroll down, please? I mean, it goes over this, uh, hold on, stop for a second. All right, you can stop there. I, I believe that, that, that not only is this sign not standard, I believe that the universal do not enter sign should not be used on a limited access open street. I think it's confusing. I think it's, uh, 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 it, it allows people to uh, yell at the uh, people going through who have an absolute right to be there. But I think that it, it, it creates a problem of, that we don't need. And, and I object to the using of the do not enter sign. And I heard Kyle, you talk about that you were going to correct it. And I think the correction, I think the, the sign, the limited access sign is the correct one. Uh, continue scrolling down, please. We've raised the issue of the barrier. This is a picture of the barrier. It's broken. You can see someone has put a tennis ball on it to try to do a, a, a muting in, in, influence. I've, I've recommended, and this is not the first time I've done it, we've recommended, excuse me, it's not me, uh, that they find a better way of, of making these movable. I think, you know, the wheels on it would, would lock open and close would make it easier for the people to move it, including pregnant women and people who have limits. And I understand that that is a problem, going to be a problem, and that there may not be a good solution to continue scrolling down, please. These are, rec these are the uh, specifics that the board has written. It, is not a, it's a, it, it was done uh, by the board chair and myself. Uh, and, and while it's not, a, I don't know if it's an official position of the board, it clearly is a communicated position of the board. Uh, you can be clear that we've listened to everything that went here tonight. Continue scrolling down, please. I think that'd be the end of it anyway. And there you can see it was signed and sent in. Uh, there are, uh, just for your own information, there are seven 24 hour or, or, or 10 24 hour, seven day a week uh, 
all closed and open streets. Only three of them are limited access. Two of them are in Queens, one of them is in Brooklyn. We don't believe that 24 seven, no, we don't have parks open 24 seven. I don't believe that limited access streets or any kind of other than full closures, which are full closed permanently, should, should uh, uh, get it to 24 hour, uh, or seven day a week. Uh, that's my issue on that one. Uh, I want to point out, you know, that the crime in the city continues to, to bloom. I mean, the the traffic, the crime in the A4 and the A8 are up, and we'll, you can look at the statistics, which I'm sure that Taya will put a copy in the chat, make available. But I want to point something out. I was at 21st Street and 3rd Avenue at 8:45 on Tuesday morning. And I was dropping off my car to get something done. When the owner who offered to give me a ride to the subway, because I was going to walk to the 25th Street, 4th Avenue subway station, all right? So I, we came around on 4th Avenue. We saw literally all the police in the world there. And everybody knows what happened there that night, that, that morning. Uh, uh, 10 people were shot. I, I think it's a, a, amazing. And, and the first responders should be, should be congratulated that none of those people died. It's a congratulate. It's a congratulation to them to knowing uh, to deal with the bleeding because that's what normally causes a lot of the death, and get all those people to the hospital alive, and all of them are going to survive. That really is something. But that night in New York City, fourteen other people were shot. A number of them were killed. We have an epidemic in New York of guns of violence that is totally out of control. And I don't know about the solution, but I want people to remember that, you know, that while 10 people were, were shot in the subway, that same day, that same night, 14 other people were shot, some of them were killed. And, and I don't want to forget that. And that's my uh, chair's report uh, for this evening. Uh, and what's the next item on the agenda? Other committee business. Is there any other committee business? Well, that, yeah, Esther, you want to yes, um, this should have been included, I guess, in the letter. Will it be Avenue between Carlton and the Delphi? They are all, that whole block has have driveways. That whole block is, you can't even enter your house on that. It's no front door, it's all driveways. That block should be excluded from open streets. I, I would ask you to submit that to the board so that we can submit something in writing. I have a video, I'll, I'll submit it. Right. Nicole, you wanna say something? Yeah, just a comment. Um not on open streets, but uh, about the incident that happened at Sunset Park. Um, I feel like it's pertinent to discuss it here because we're at the Transportation and Public Safety Committee. Just a comment that I wanted to make is that I have actually a friend whose husband was there um, when it happened and you know she was pretty terrified, um, but uh, he had, they both had some very interesting things to say and that was that they believe that it was the transit workers at the MTA who saved lives that day. They were act quickly to get people onto the R train that was across from the N train that had the incident. And they quickly moved people without having full information or even knowing what was going on to the next station where they could disembark safely. And I think without the quick thinking of the MTA workers, there could have been a lot more deaths or injuries that day. And so I just wanted to take a moment to thank um, MTA workers for keeping us safe. Thank you, that was very nice of you. Now, we, uh, it is, I think, uh, open session now, too. Is that the next thing on the agenda? All right, community, fo community forum, new business. Does anybody else wish to say anything? I see Ms. Cotine's hand up and Ms. Linda's hand. Yeah. Hi, I raised the question and that I wanted uh, Emily, or I guess Kyle, to respond to this whole new policy that uh, DOT is not giving violations for tree damage to sidewalks. I know personally, I've been waiting nine years for DOT to fix my sidewalk as they promised to do. 
um, and I've been waiting about a year for the uh, forestry department to come and fix the area around the tree, but you can't get in touch with them. So there's no information out there. That little blurb on the website tells you absolutely nothing, Emily. It doesn't tell us. Every person who's had a violation should be contacted to explain the new policy and where do we go from here? And no one contacted me. I just, I actually heard about it from one of our citizens. No, otherwise I would still be, you know, harassing Keith Bray to get my damn sidewalk repaired. Um, <laughs> which, uh, he promised to do years ago, but then totally screwed it up with some bullshit. But anyway, um, you need to tell us where we go from here. Does that mean the violations just disappear? Does, is DOT still responsible to fix our sidewalks as they promised to do? Um, so what's the deal, Emily? Give us information. Oh, Emily left a long time ago. Okay, is Kyle here? Is anybody here who knows anything? We will, we will, we will ask, we will ask, I, I'm aware of the question. We will ask DOT to follow up with a specific response. Okay, thank you. You saw I put it on the Borm Hill side and it was- I, mean, you know, I read it on the Borm Hill one day. Yeah, so I, nobody knows I, about this, Sid. I have, a, I have a water department cause one on my sidewalk that I have the same question. Yeah, okay. We thank need you. to know. Thank you. Next person, please. Ms. Linda. Hi, I have an easy question. I hope I get an easy answer. I live on Hall Street between, I mean, I live on uh, Willoughby entrance uh, between Hall and Rice, and they have a lot of blue signs. And I understand most of them, but there's a sign for blind persons crossing ahead. And it's a diamond shape. And I've never seen that sign before. Does Pratt have uh, blind people crossing the street there? Is that why they have the sign? Well, that's, that's a universal sign. It, it, it's around other parts of the city, all right? It, it is a warning sign that they're blind people who will be using canes or other ways to cross and that the driver is supposed to stop for them when they see them, all right? If they have that. Now, now you should know it's just like cross, the, the rule now, and the rule's always been, that if someone's in a crosswalk at an intersection, you're supposed to stop, all right? But as you know, those rules are are honored in their breach, unfortunately, in New York City, including by the police, you should know. I have a I have a thing with the police who do, who just go, when there's a, someone in one of those without a light, goes through themselves. And I report them when they do that. So, so, but yes, Sid, what they've done- I don't, I don't, I don't know is, if there's any- does, They does, put I, in I, new I, stop signs on each side, okay. and, and that's needed. But I saw this sign and I was wondering if they have a blind, Portion. They, may blind, they may have a blind student. They, you know, it, it, it would if they requested it from the city. I mean, this is if the city is requested because of the blind, they put the sign up. Okay, thank you. I've just never seen that sign before, and it has it persons with an S. When you take the road when you take the road test. If you get the booklet, you know the state, the DMV, motor vehicle one, the booklet for when you study, it's in there. I know it's in there. I know I'm, it's I'm, there I'm, now. It's on Willoughby. <laughs> I'm Thank you. To see sure that it's there. Okay. Next. Don't see any other hands. Um, feel free to wave your physical hand if you can't raise your digital one. And if that's it, it's we're done with the agenda. <laughs> okay. And, and I, I want to thank everybody. It's 1.35 in the morning here in Warsaw. All right. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending and I ask for a motion to adjourn. Again, I can't see. John, John I, the wait, I made the motion. I'll second that motion. Okay, and thank you everyone. Have a good evening. I'll see you when I get back. Take care, Sid. Enjoy. <laughs>